This video is sponsored by Grammarly, but more on them in a minute. What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Selena. So today I thought I would change things up and instead of doing the usual monthly reset that I do, I'm going to be doing a quarterly reset. It's going to be really similar to the monthly reset. This time I'm going to be looking at the bigger picture of goals and spending for the last three months and kind of do like an overall check-in to see where I am in terms of goals that I set for 2022 then determine what goals and intentions I want to focus on for the rest of the year to kind of finish the year out strong so I think this video will be fun it was largely inspired by my friend Rachel Vin she recently posted a quarterly reset so make sure to go check hers out as well <laughs> Okay, so getting right into the goals section. So I create my monthly intentions based off of the three main intentions that I made for 2022. So if you haven't checked out my 2022 reset, make sure to check that out. So starting off with health and wellness, I actually have been waking up before 9 a.m. and I did see a new therapist recently, so I'm glad to be checking those off of my list. I think I'm still gonna try to see another therapist because I'm not sure if this is my person. I really think that it's important to find a therapist that you really connect with and you feel like you can be vulnerable with and I'm still on the look for that, but I am proud that I've at least been attempting to see a new therapist. I'm walking 7,500 steps on average. My average has been around 5,700 steps. Okay, getting into personal and professional goals. So the first one I have is to post two new videos every single week. I haven't really been doing that as much recently because I've been having more sponsored videos, which is really exciting and I'm so thankful because it's helping me get closer towards my savings and financial goals. So I just want to say thank you to you all who watch my videos and support me. I am so, so grateful. Sometimes the timelines with brands and negotiations and everything makes it a little bit more difficult to post on my posting days, but I have been trying to post two videos a week, so that's still going to be my goal. But again, timelines can get a little bit hectic when we're a nine to five and thankfully there are productivity tools out there to help you in these circumstances so with that said I want to thank the sponsor of today's video which is Grammarly I'm so excited to be working with them because as I mentioned before working a nine to five being a content creator it can all just be a lot to juggle and with the holidays coming up and all of the preparations that go into that it is essential to find ways to boost efficiency and and productivity during these times. If you're not familiar with Grammarly, they are a must-have desktop app to help you boost your efficiency and productivity. Grammarly makes it so easy to write any long form or short form content, whether it be responding to YouTube brand emails and negotiations, or if I'm simply completing correspondence during my nine to five work day. Grammarly provides comprehensive suggestions to help me get my work done more efficiently so that I can be more productive in and outside of work. Grammarly is so accessible and easy to use. They provide so much value in both their free version and their premium version. It makes preparing for presentations, writing out reports, or responding to emails so much easier by proofreading everything that you write and providing comprehensive spelling, grammar, and punctuation suggestions with their free version. Grammarly's premium version offers full sentence rewrites to rephrase your hard to read sentences, which if you're like me, it makes it so much easier to just write out everything you do as your first draft, but also get those corrections done for you along the way, which just saves so much time. One of the things that I struggle with most are run on sentences, and I have to be really intentional to get my point across in also like joining sentences better and more efficiently so that it makes more sense. So Grammarly has honestly been helping me so much with that. If you want to try Grammarly, sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. Simply go to the link in the description down below. I just want to say thank you once again to Grammarly for sponsoring today's video. Let's get through the rest of my goals. So another goal that I had made was actually back in last month, which was to hit 31,000 subscribers, which I have 
surpass. We are at 51,000 subscribers, which honestly blows my mind. I'm probably gonna say that every single video. It's hilarious, but here we are. <laughs> I'm so, so, so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, for supporting me. I have no words, I'm so grateful. Another goal that I had was to read a Bible verse every morning as part of my morning routine. I won't lie, I haven't been doing this at least not in the mornings. I do read a Bible verse every day. I have the Bible app on my phone, so I always get a notification for the new Bible word, for a new, for the Bible verse of the day. Okay, Selena, gotta work on spell checking myself in real time. <laughs> I also wanted to read a book every single month. I haven't been doing that every single month recently or at least this last quarter. So it's definitely something that I want to work on for fourth quarter. Financial goals, oh, how things have changed. As I talked about in my last monthly reset, the Biden administration has decided that they're going to forgive student loans. So if everything goes as planned or as stated by administration, I should be coming out of this year pretty much debt free. I think I would have like maybe a thousand dollars left in student loans, which I would honestly just pay them off so that I could be debt free. So my goal for fourth quarter is going to be to pay off all student loans. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then another goal I had was to eat 70% of my meals at home, which is about 14 meals and then seven meals out. I definitely have been meeting or surpassing this because I don't think I eat seven meals out every week. Usually it's probably like five or so meals a week because I do like to go out for brunch on the weekends. What can I say? And I have not opened a Roth IRA with Fidelity so I definitely need to do that so now I want to see what goals I want to change up for the rest of the year and these are like the intentions that I usually set monthly but realistically they don't change a whole lot month to month I kind of keep the same intentions and then I might change them up if something new is coming up in that month and then sleeping seven hours a night instead of the sleep one I think I'm going to change it to a running goal because that is one of my 2022 goals and I'm actually so close to getting there you guys because I've been focusing on running and also having like a hybrid workout plan I will say I do miss quite a few of my workouts. I need to work on the consistency aspect. I am very close to, I think, running a 5K. So technically I ran a 5K a couple of weeks ago on my Sunday fun day. That's what I like to call them to hopefully get me hyped up for the run. But I haven't ran in the last few days and that run it took me about 40 minutes to run a 5k so my goal is to run a 5k race and i'm not gonna set like a timing limit or a pace goal or anything like that because truly my entire goal for this year when it comes to running was just to become a runner again and to run a 5k and i'm actually really proud of myself because I think I am getting there and I'm so close and we still have three months left and I actually signed up for a 5k for next month in November so yes I'm really excited for that keep an eye out for a November monthly reset or like a November update so maybe I'll do like a running vlog again to have a little update on how the 5k race goes but I'm very excited for that by the end of the year if I have 50,000 subscribers truthfully I've said this before in other videos, but with YouTube, you never know, like we have zero control over, you know, how many people are going to subscribe to our channel. I have zero control over that. So that's why these are like monthly intentions. This is something that I would aspire to. It would be nice to hit it. I don't really have the expectation that it will happen, if that makes sense. But it's also really fun to hit milestones on YouTube because it kind of, it's something to look forward to. So we're at 51,000 subscribers. We have three months. So I'm gonna say if maybe we could hit 57,000 subscribers by the end of the year, that would be so, so, so cool. I'm gonna continue reading the Bible verse that I get on my phone every single day. So these are the goals that I'll have for the rest of the year. I might do a monthly reset or two before the end of the year ends. And then maybe at the end, I'll do like an annual recap to kind of see where we left off and then set goals for the new year. So I'm really, really excited for that. Those are my monthly goals. So now let's get into some of the fun stuff. Quarterly spending. go over 
quarter three spending, which is July through September, pretty much what I spent in those months. So it's a lot more money than I thought. Seeing it in this kind of bigger section kind of is eye opening. So we're gonna see what categories I spent the most money in. So if you're new here, I use the Mint app, which is just like mint.com to see all of my spending trends and to help me set up my new budget. You can also use the Mint app itself to create your own budget. I know a lot of you asked me for my Excel spreadsheet, but if you're someone who doesn't really feel comfortable with Excel or you're just starting out with budgeting, I really, really recommend just using this program to track your spending first of all and then to create your budget because it's free to you, it's free to use, it's easy to understand and navigate. And then once you get kind of comfortable with using this, then I would recommend checking out like an expense tracker or something like that. But if you still want to see like my Excel spreadsheet, I still need to work on creating one and then potentially selling it like on a website, but it's not priority currently because I do have a lot of other things I'm working on. Okay, so let's take a look at my spending trends for quarter three as you can see you can either look at it via a pie chart or a graph so just looking at it you can already tell that i spent the most amount of money in home because rent is where the majority of my money goes immediately and then the second largest category is shopping which i guess kind of makes sense because it was like right before summer so let's see if you click on transactions it'll actually like show you what you spent your money on keep in mind also like as a little disclaimer sometimes i'll buy things like for my home or uh as a gift or whatever like through amazon i'll buy groceries and sometimes Sometimes that all goes under shopping as well um, but I split groceries with my partner so some of the money I do end up getting back so it's not a hundred percent I know someone mentioned to me that I could put in Venmo transactions but sometimes I just get the money back in cash so it gets complicated but that's just like my little disclaimer so shopping was a big category so hopefully see I would say that I hope that shopping could be a smaller spending category in fourth quarter but realistically with Christmas coming up New Year's traveling back home for the holidays i'm just kind of nervous to see what my shopping category will look like in court in fourth quarter compared to third quarter and then the third largest expense is food and dining which makes sense because if you're not new here you know that i love to go out to eat that's pretty much what I do for fun. I don't really like go out drinking very often or to any events. I just like to go out to eat or order food and watch anime or Korean dramas. So that's where the majority of my food goes after shopping. And then after that was travel, which this makes a lot of sense since I did go back home to Oregon for my cousin's wedding. So that $919 was for my airplane ticket round trip. So that is where the majority of my spending went. And then as you can see, the categories get pretty small, honestly, considering it's for three months. The home expense, I'm not really gonna be able to change for fourth quarter. Shopping, okay, if I can keep my shopping at around the same or less, that'll be amazing. I'm not gonna be strict about it because obviously like with Christmas coming up, I, I start to feel more generous with like gifts and I just love seeing smiles on people's faces when you give them something during the holiday season or just in general so I just I can't promise that my spending will be better but food and dining is definitely something that I hope to decrease especially since I'm going home for the holidays and I tend to eat a lot more home cooked meals like my mom will make food my tias will make food and we'll go to my tias house for food and oh, I'm just so excited for like tamales, sole. oh I'm excited for all all the food so hopefully this will decrease for fourth quarter and then i'm sure travel will still be around the same since i do need to purchase my ticket to go back home and i might also have a trip that i go on in the new year for my friend's birthday so travel might might increase we'll see have you looked at what you spent in third quarter hopefully this will kind of like inspire you because i think this is my first time looking at my expenses in this like big picture view i've really enjoyed doing the monthly resets and looking at my spending that way but seeing it three months at a time with more data 
is really eye-opening because month to month sometimes my categories might change for example if we look at my expense tracker you can see like the top category in June was shopping but the top category in May was home and then the top category in April was travel so the top three categories that take up the most amount of spending might vary month to month but when you group them by quarter it's really interesting to see where the majority of your money goes the majority of the time so let me know down below if you guys want to see me incorporate kind of like a huge recap on my yearly spending and also in addition to my goal check-in for the year because I think during my 2023 reset I'm for sure gonna check in on my 2022 goals in order to create goals for the new year do you also want me to incorporate my annual spending and like my annual financial goals if you do let me know and I will try to plan that into it Okay, well, let's get into my favorite parts of these reset videos, which are my current favorites. These are some of the things that I purchased in the last quarter that I absolutely love. So, <laughs> they might sound kind of funny. I tried to make sure that I, I'm not incorporating any of my favorites here that I've already talked about in other reset videos. So that makes it a little bit harder because obviously those were my favorites those months. So I recently bought <laughs> these socks from Hanes. You get 10 pairs in a pack and they're so comfy. I love them so much. Perfect for fall, perfect all year round. They're so comfy. Who says you need to buy Nike crew socks? I love Nike, but sometimes it's just nice when you can save your money and still feel super comfortable. So definitely recommend those. And I recently finally purchased a webcam for my like work from home setup and I absolutely love it. It's white. It's aesthetic. She's cute. Also, she's like a wide angle camera and it's HD and also like I notice when I turn on my camera, it's nice because even if it's like a little bit darker, it has like a natural, it corrects the lighting so that it just looks better. I've noticed just a dramatic difference in the quality of my video as well as the quality of my sound. And it's honestly just a really cute little camera as well. It's from Logitech. I love Logitech, so enough said. There's this mug that I bought a couple months ago, and I love it so much. It's so cute. It's glass. I got the iridescent one because in the light, it just shines so beautifully. I'm not using it right now because it's currently drying since it was washed, but I love it so much. And it has like this cute like bamboo top to help keep your drink warm. And it's just, it's so my aesthetic. I love it so much, definitely recommend. And it wasn't even expensive, but if you do purchase it, make sure you don't wash it in the dishwasher and that you only hand wash it. Guys, okay, this has been a life changer. Just life changing. I recently, well, in the last quarter, purchased a massage gun. For the longest time, I wanted a massage gun, but I didn't know which one to try. And I just did my own research on Amazon. And this specific one has so many different settings that you can use. And it comes in a really well packaged bag as well that you can just zip up and carry with you. Like you could even take it on vacation with you if you needed. But I love using it after my runs. I have pretty bad chronic back pain again if you're not new here you already know but it's nice because I can kind of like give myself a massage I don't know about you but sometimes the hardest part of giving a massage can be like putting enough pressure and figuring all of that out I have pretty weak hands like my joints start to hurt pretty easily so it's hard for me to give myself a massage or to give others a massage so this massage gun has just truly saved my life and come in handy and I really recommend for the price it's so worth it that's all I'm gonna say okay my other favorite thing that I purchased this last quarter was an office chair I had been searching four months to find an affordable ergonomic chair that would also kind of fit my aesthetic. I didn't want to buy a black office chair because for me, I know that aesthetic is not everything. Trust me, I grew up 
you know, low income, I totally get wanting to make things, not having money to make everything aesthetic all the time, I totally get that. But I do also believe that, you know, with patience and saving money, you can still make your space your aesthetic, whatever your aesthetic might be, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You can make it your aesthetic within your budget, you know, you just have to be willing to be patient to try to find a good sale. So that's all to say that I was looking high and low for an office chair that was within my budget. I believe there was like a sale where it was $100 off and that's when I went in and I purchased it and I'm really glad I did because otherwise I would be sitting on a very very uncomfortable Ikea chair. Yes, so I'm very glad I got it. So now that Black Friday is coming up, I definitely recommend keeping an eye out for these things if any of these things interest you because I'm telling you a good office chair makes a huge difference. Those are my favorite products. I haven't really been listening to any new podcasts this last quarter. Well, I already shared with you guys like my favorite podcasts in my monthly resets, so I'm not going to go over any of the same stuff, but I have been watching a lot of Korean dramas, like I said, so I'm just going to talk about like my top two favorites, which it's so hard to choose because realistically I love them all. So the first favorite is probably the crowd favorite that I had always like heard about and I hadn't watched it. And then my friend Jenna was like, Selena, you have to watch Crash Landing on you. And so I did and I watched it all in like three days, two days, I don't even know. I literally did not sleep two nights in a row because I just kept watching the episodes because it was so good. It was just such a good heartwarming romance. It was like this man who's just like the manliest man <laughs> alive on the planet and just such a gentleman the way that he would care for this woman who was like this stranger who just literally crash landed into this like military base where he is the captain i don't know it was kind of like this fairy tale thing but what i loved most about it was the emotion that it would create inside of me i'm someone who will unapologetically cry like just wail shed tears if a show is really good and i get really invested in characters my empathy for them like my it just mm, it the hormones all the things and then tears just fall and they just don't stop so that was this show which probably for some of you that sounds like hell so you've been warned but I loved it it was almost like a healing a healing experience because I just got to let out so many tears <laughs> oh but it was so good what I loved about it as well was that it doesn't necessarily have like maybe the conventional fairy tale ending i really appreciate because it kind of keeps you wondering the whole time like what's gonna happen how's it gonna end who's gonna end up together loved it definitely recommend and then the second one that i would say was also my favorite is 2521 which a bunch of you recommended but then my friend ricky also said she really loved it and so i had to i had to watch it sooner than later and i'm so glad that i did it's something that i didn't think i would enjoy because it was about this young girl who was pretty much like high school age and she was just super super passionate about fencing which I know nothing about I have zero passion slash interest for fencing until I watched this Korean drama I absolutely fell in love with her character just the entire plot the slow brewing romance between her and this like older guy that already graduated high school i won't go into any details but it was beautiful it was a great story of first love and again it's one of those one of those very rare exceptions <laughs> that i've noticed in korean dramas where it might not end <laughs> i'm like trying not to give too much away where it might not end the way that it would end in like a romantic drama i just loved it the story was so good so i definitely i definitely 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 recommend 2521. Those are pretty much my main favorites from last quarter that I hadn't shared with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little section. I always enjoy like sharing my favorites with you all so definitely let me know down below what were some of your favorites this last quarter or in like the last few months. I always want to know some new Korean dramas, animes to watch, some new products to try so please be sure to comment those down below so that I can try them and also other people in our community can try them out as well but with all of that said i hope that you all enjoyed this quarterly reset it was not planned or structured just chill <laughs> i just did the things 
that I would do for my own quarterly reset. So definitely let me know down below if you enjoyed this style of video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps support my channel. And with all that said, happy end of the year. We're getting so close to the end of the year. So early happy holidays to all of you and your family. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.